everyone and welcome to another video. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to make a parallax design in Flutter. So the UI that I'm going to be building is this one. And on the first side, it looks quite normal but as you scroll the content, you get to see this cool scrolling effect known as parallax. Imagine implementing something like this for your next app. Alright, let's get started. If any one of you does not know what parallax is, it's basically a scrolling effect where one element moves or scrolls at a different rate than the other. Although parallax in practical world or real world is something that we observe quite regularly, especially when we are traveling, the things that are closer to us appear to be moving faster than the things that are far away from us. That is, that is parallax. And the parallax design has been around in the design world for quite a long time, starting from video games then web and now you can see them in apps as well. In Flutter you can achieve parallax either by using dependencies or even without them. Today I'm gonna make this without using any dependencies. Okay so here I am in my project directory and I'm gonna create a new project named Flutter Parallax. Now as the project is created let me just show you that from where did I got all these images. So this is game called Firewatch. I don't know if anyone of you has played it. I saw their website and just loved the UI and decided to remake that in Flutter. So you can see that as you scroll you get to see this amazing parallax effect. And to get these images I simply open the inspect element tool using ctrl shift i. And here you can see that on an element with id key part dash 8 an image called parallax 8.png is set as a background. So I copied the address of that image and pasted it here on the address bar just after the domain. And there we go. And after that I simply saved the image. And I did the same to get all the images. Although you won't have to do anything like that as all of these images are present inside of the github repository linked below. Okay, so now I'm going to VS Code and I have imported all the images inside of the assets folder. And I've also imported a font inside of the fonts directory. Actually, there are various variations of the fonts. Also, I've mentioned it all inside of the pubspec.yaml. So now Flutter knows that I'm going to be working with all these resources. But before actually jumping to something this complex, let me just make a simple parallax app without so many images. So here I am instead of my main.dart file and I'm going to create a stateless widget called my app and this my app would contain a material app and I'm going to set title as parallax, set this debug show checked mode banner to false and then I'm going to pass the my homepage class object to home. Now I'm going to create a stateful widget named my homepage. It would return a scaffold widget and there would be no app bar. There is just going to be a body. And now uh, the parent widget for our entire app would be this widget called notification listener. By definition notification listener is just a widget that listens for notifications. Also note that notification listener widget is categorized under scrolling widgets in Flutter documentation. So that means whenever a page or a screen of a Flutter app is scrolled notifications are sent to the top of the tree and this notification listener can actually listen for all those notifications. Then these notifications will trigger the on notification callback which we can utilize to write our code according to the notification. So like I said, we need to target an on notification callback and it's a function that takes an argument. So I'm simply going to call it v and then just inside of this callback function, I'm going to check the type of notification that we are receiving. So I'm going to write if v is scroll update notification. So now everything that we write inside of this if statement would be executed only if scroll update notification is received or in other words whenever the page is scrolled the condition inside of this if block is true. Okay so for now I'm going to leave all this empty and I'm going to set stack as a child for our notification listener widget. Well since it's a parallax we're going to have to use stack as we don't want one widget to be relative in positioning to the other which means every element should be independent of each other. And here I'm going to create a position widget whose top would be 0, uh, left would be 0 and then I'm going to have a container with height 100 and width 100 and give it a color say uh, red. Then uh, just below it I'm going to have another container with the same height and width but I'm going to change its top to 100 and left to 150 and I'm going to give it a green color. All right. Let's see what do we have on the screen. So I'm going to execute the flutter run command in the terminal. So our app has completed building and there we go. Our two containers are rendered on the screen. Now we need to scroll them at different rates. Well to scroll them I'm going to come back in here and right at the very bottom I'm going to write a list view 
and pass a container as its children with height say 600 and give it a transparent background color. Now remember you don't want to give this list view at the top of the stack because then the list view would be beneath all the elements because stack lays out various widgets on top of each other in form of layers and the widget that is declared first is laid out at the very bottom of the layer then the widget declared after that is laid out on top of it and it just keeps going on. So you would want to declare the list view in, in the very front so as to keep or at the very top of the layers so as to keep the page interactive and make sure that the user is able to scroll the page. An invisible list view is on top of those containers but if you try to scroll them they are still not scrollable. So now I'm going to come at the top here and I'm going to create a variable called top1 and set it to 0. Then I'm going to create another variable called top2 and set it to 100. And I'm going to replace these two variables with the hard coded values inside of the position widget for these two containers. Now here's where the real magic begins. So I'm going to come inside of this if block and define a set state method and I'm going to write top1 equals to top1 minus v dot scroll delta by 3. What this would do is it would divide the scrolling speed for the first container by 3 times. And then I'm going to write top2 equals to top2 minus v dot scroll delta by 1. So here there would be no changes in the scrolling speed for the second container which means that first container would scroll 3 times slower than normal speed and the second container would scroll uh, just, just normally. I'm going to hot restart the app and try to scroll these containers. And there we go, you can see that red container scrolls much slower where, uh, as compared to the green one which scrolls much faster. So that's it for the parallax, like this, this was the foundation and we are going to build the complex UI on this foundation. So I'm going to remove these two containers and I'm going to create another position widget and set its left to minus 45, top to 0 for now and then we're going to have a container as a child. I'm going to set its height to 550, width to 900 and then I'm going to have image.asset as a child for the container. Then I'm going to pass assets slash parallax2.png here and also I'm going to set its fit to boxfit.cover. Alright now let's take a look. There we go you can see this image is rendered in our screen. Now in my device this title seems to be at the center but I can't guarantee that for all the devices because achieving that is not our primary goal. Now we're going to need several of these position widgets each having a different value of top and a different asset. So at the top here, I'm going to create a string variable named asset and a double variable named top. And I'm going to replace the hard-coded top and asset values with the variables. And now I'm going to extract this position widget and name it parallax widget. And there we go. Now all we have to do is change the value of top and change the value of asset. In fact, I'm going to come inside of this parallax widget class and inside of the asset function, I'm going to write assets slash dollar asset dot png as all of our images are present inside of the asset folder. So now we just have to pass the name of the image which we wish to show on the screen. Okay, so let's try this. So in the asset, I'm gonna pass parallax zero. Then in the next one, I'm gonna pass parallax one and top for both the widgets would be set to zero. And there we go, both the images are rendered perfectly over one another. Now over here at the top, I'm gonna remove the previously defined variables and I'm gonna create eight double variables and initialize all of them to zero, just like that. Rate zero keeps track of the position of the image parallax zero, and then rate one does the same for parallax one, and so on. Now instead of this stack, all we have to do is write the parallax widget one after the other following the sequence of the image. For example, at the very bottom we have uh, parallax zero, then above it we have parallax one, then parallax two, and so on until parallax eight. Okay, now let's restart the app and there you go. We have this beautiful scene with us, but of course it doesn't move. So I'm going to go inside this if block and define the rate with which the value of each of the double variables should change as the UI is scrolled. But before that, if you go to the Firewatch website, notice that the element at the very bottom moves at a normal speed as it moves together with the content. So I'm going to come back here and I'm going to write rate 8 equals to rate 8 minus v dot scroll delta by 1. And this makes sure that the rate A decreases at the same rate with which the page is being scrolled. Also, I'm going to write it like rate 8 minus equals to v dot scroll delta by 1. And then I'm going to target rate 7 and I'm going to write rate 7 equals v dot scroll delta by 5. 
so as the denominator increases the overall value decreases so i'm going to do the same thing with rate 6 and i'm going to divide it by 2 for rate 5 i'm going to divide it by 2.5 rate 4 divided by 3 rate 3 3.5 i'm just keeping a margin of 0.5 between each one of those values and then at the very end we have rate 0 minus equals to v dot scroll delta divided by 5 all right now i'm going to restart the app once more and i'm going to try to scroll the page and there we go we have successfully applied parallax effect on our ui and it looks really cool but there's a problem with the image at the very bottom as we scroll you can see that it's not where it's supposed to be so let's change its position over here i'm simply going to change the value of rate 8 to 90 and now if you hot restart the app here we go you can see that it shifted a little and as you scroll it's right where you want it to be okay so the main purpose of this tutorial ends here. This is how you make a custom and complex parallax design in Flutter. But practically when you're working on an app, you would want to show more data just below this UI. Like this web page, it shows more info about the game after user scrolls and the parallax ends. So let's work on that as well. So instead of the list view, we have a container that is on top of this layer of the images and its height is set to 600. Now when we scroll, we scroll to the height of this container. So now all of our content would be below this container. So just below it, I'm going to give another container and remember to set its color to be the same as that of the very last image or the parallax 8 image so that it appears to continue from there. And then I'm going to give a width of double dot infinity, set its padding from top to 70. Then uh, as a child, I'm going to pass column and in the column, I'm going to set cross axis alignment to center. Then this column would have uh, several text widgets and size box widgets. So first of all, I'm going to write text parallax in style and I'm going to set some style for this text. I'm going to write font size 30, font family to Montserrat extra light. This is something that I've mentioned in the pubspec.yaml. I'm going to set letter spacing to 1.8 and color to this. Then again, I'm going to write text flutter, set, give it some style, set its font size to 51, font family to Montserrat regular, letter spacing uh, 1.8 and color the same as the previous one. Then I'm going to give it a size box of height 20. Then again, a size box with width 190. And I'm going to pass a divider as a child for our size box. And I'm going to give it a height 1 and this color. Then again, I'm going to write size box, height 20, text made by, give it some style, and then text the CS guy. And again, I'm going to give it some style. So that's it. And also at the very bottom, I'm going to have a size box of height 50. So as to give some bottom margin as well. All right, now let's reload it once more and there we go. As you will scroll through the UI, you will see this content popping up. And our UI looks great, but there's still one more thing left. Currently, our app looks great in landscape mode, but as you change the orientation, everything falls apart. Now, either you could change the size of the containers on orientation change, or you could maybe do some other thing as well. But currently what I'm gonna do is come over here at the very top of the file, remove this run app function, and instead of the void main, I'm going to write system chrome dot set preferred orientations. And as an argument, I'm going to pass a list, but it would have only a single value. And that would be device orientation dot landscape left. So this tells Flutter to change the orientation to landscape left. And then as soon as this code executes, we want to run our app. So I'm going to write dot then and pass this underscore. Now the reason why I'm passing this underscore over here is because the function inside of then requires a void argument. So you could have written anything like even your name and it would work. And I'm also going to import the necessary library services.dart. So instead of the then callback, I'm going to write run app my app and that's it. Now if you hot restart the app or maybe quit it and run it again, you should be able to see what we did there. Although normally an app would probably not use this kind of setting but in our case for this example, it's just seem better to force the app into landscape mode. Anyways, I hope you liked the video and enjoyed watching me make this. And you would enjoy it even more when you would experience this on your device. The complete code is available on my GitHub repository and it's linked in the description below. And there's a complete version of the app linked on GitHub as well, which you can download. Although it's for Android users only. So I hope you liked the video and learned something exciting today. Show your support by liking, sharing and commenting on the video. Also make sure to subscribe to watch more and more awesome content. See you soon.